So I did what any sensible parent would do. I quit my job and left my career and ran for Congress. Um, now, I have said that several times, but it begs a question that I have never actually answered, which is that does seem like maybe a slightly radical step to take, given the circumstances. It's because it's only half of the story. Um, there is another half to the story that will explain the intensity of my reaction. See, Henry wasn't actually my first child. Um, shortly after I was married, about 15 years ago, um, my husband and I were expecting our first child. And about 23 weeks into the pregnancy, I had um, some complications, and I went to see my doctor, the only doctor that my insurance plan would allow me to see. And she didn't take me seriously. She said, I have a feeling everything will be all right. Go home, you're paranoid. A week later, my daughter Deirdre was born and lived for about a week. The, um, that experience profoundly affected the way that I think about the world. And there were two lessons that I have never been able to let go. One, you cannot rely on people in authority to make things right. And second, sometimes you get only one chance. We are at an inflection point in human history right now. The world is going to be vastly different 20 years from now. Our country is going to go through a radical transformation, whether we are ready for it or not. We're called to build a world in which the basic promises on which this country was founded are finally realized. The idea that every person is created equal. We're called to be a beacon for the rest of the world, for the idea that government of the people, by the people, and for the people is the only way to fulfill humankind's destiny. We have been called to take our country back, and now it is finally time for us to take it forward. So President Clinton, how many of you were here for President Clinton's speech the other night? President Clinton did something very interesting in his speech. He delivered two fundamentally contradictory messages. He said, support the health care legislation no matter what it is. That was one message he said that he delivered quite clearly. But the other message he delivered was that don't ask, don't tell became policy, even though he knew it was the wrong thing, because he said we didn't support him and make him do the right thing. That second message that we have to make our leaders do the right thing was raw and true. We can't rely on people in authority to make everything right. We have got to do the hard work of governing. It's our job as Americans. It's our obligation. And to be perfectly blunt, I consider it my obligation for Henry. The vehicle that we have for change is the people that we've elected, and we have done collectively a tremendous job of electing people to office in this country. We've taken back the House, we have taken back the Senate, and we have taken the presidency of the United States. But that is just the beginning of the battle. There are a lot of people, mostly not people in this room, but a lot of people who thought that that was sufficient and have stopped. We have to help the people that we've elected. And to be perfectly blunt, we've been asked to. 
I've been working for the past several months with the Congressional Progressive Caucus, 83 of the most progressive members of the United States House and the United States Senate. And the message that I get from them consistently is, we are doing everything in our power to make a difference, but we have to have the support of the grassroots. We need the grassroots helping to frame the message. We need the grassroots applying pressure. In the health care debate that's going down right now, the Congressional Progressive Caucus did something absolutely revolutionary in March, which is that in March, Congressman Raul Grijalva, the newly elected co-chair of the caucus, whipped the members of the Progressive Caucus and got enough of the members to say, we will not support any piece of health care legislation that doesn't include a public option. that the progressives were able to then send a letter to President Obama and to Nancy Pelosi and to Steny Hoyer saying, guess what? You want health care legislation? It isn't the blue dogs you've got to worry about. You need to be talking to progressives because we are drawing the line and we are not going to back down. In the months since then, a remarkable thing has happened, um, something really quite revolutionary, which is that all of us have been working to make sure that that battle, that fight that they picked, is a fight that together we can help them win. And much to the surprise of the Blue Dogs and people like Max Baucus, we are in fact winning. So there's an enormous amount of work to do, not just with health care, but with all kinds of issues in making sure that we are working together with the people that we elect to change the game. The single biggest competitive advantage the progressives in Congress have is sitting right here tonight. The single biggest competitive advantage, because they don't have large corporations, they don't have armies of lobbyists, but they do have us. Now, there are people who believe that we shouldn't treat any member of Congress, even the progressives, as partners, but instead as the enemy. They are wrong. Destroying our allies is the surest way for us to lose, and we cannot afford to lose. We owe it to this country to win. We've been called to do the hard work of governing. We need to get to the point right now of being ready to leave it all on the field. I know there's been a lot of talk about health care reform. I don't know that it has been conveyed how critical this battle is. This is about a whole lot more than just health care. This is about a precedent, about the direction of the country. This is, quite frankly, about the soul of our country. That's a lesson that the teabaggers already know. They know that if they can defeat this, we will not be able to take the country in the direction that it ought to be going. If we lose this battle, we will have virtually no chance of winning anything from here on out. So I'm going to ask you today to take out everything you've got. If you can blog about it, which most of you can, please do. If you have the ability to make viral videos, if you have the ability to frame, if you can write letters to the editor or get people to write letters to the editor, if you can get people to show up at town hall meetings, if you can come up with ideas that I haven't thought of that you think are going to have an impact on this debate, do it now. Find your courage. Find your conviction. Dust yourself off and go into battle now. We have been called, and it's time to get to work.